most beloved Sayyid Aman Lishah Sahib was reciting Wa Amma Bi Ni'mati Rabbika Fahadith Publicize the favor of Allah Tell people that we have been blessed with the favor of Allah Imam Muhammad bin Ismail Bukhari radiallahu ta'ala and his question What is the greatest favor of Allah? And Imam Bukhari radiallahu ta'ala and who says Muhammadun Ni'matullah Muhammad is the great favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So Milad Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is expression of happiness and in Milad Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam many questions come which we will answer very briefly for the brothers and sisters who will be questioned day in and day out. Did the Prophet ﷺ do it? First question, did the Prophet celebrate his birthday? As the evolvement of time, the evolving of years and decades, methods and strategies of thanking Allah have changed. Whilst those performed in the orthodox days, or in the days of Rasulullah remain. Whether one thanks Allah by giving sadaqat and khairat, whether someone thanks Allah by fasting, whether one thanks Allah by cooking food, whether one thanks Allah by saying nawafil prayers, whether one thanks Allah by calling the people to the masajid to listen to the ulama, and those who praise the Prophet with rashids and nats, but the Prophet والسلام, thanked Allah Kareem in the most best of forms. Imam Bukhari writes that the Sahaba Ikram Imam Allah asked, O Prophet وسلم, why do you fast on a Monday? And the Prophet والسلام, says, on this day, the glorious Quran's revelation began. It was revealed upon me through Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. And I was born on this day. And I fast on this day to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So fasting on a Monday is an action of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam whose intention originally was the revelation of the Quran and the birth of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. But someone will again question say, Shaykh, this is not right. Because we have numerous narrations saying that the Prophet of Allah died on the 12th of Rabi al So what are you doing? Are you expressing your happiness upon the death of the Prophet But this will be only for he who believes that Allah's Rasul alayhi demise is forever. Has he not read the narration of Imam Qurtami radiallahu ta'ala anhu? The Imam of not this age, not the last decade, not the decade before that. More than 600 years ago, the Imam writes that every Monday and every Thursday most specifically, every single action of every ummati, of every believing man, every believing woman is presented in Madinah Mustafa Kareem is alive 
for the people of Iman, for the people of Taqwa. Let me take you again to Imam Qutri's narration. He says, the glorious Quran says, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُ اللَّهَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولُ لَوَجَدُ اللَّهَ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا Oh beloved, when these people make sin upon themselves, when they do guna upon themselves, when they have violated the laws of Allah, when all, all their shortcomings are, have come over them and they are drowning in sin, they will come to you, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they will ask forgiveness from Allah, and Allah's Rasul will ask forgiveness. When Mustafa Kareem Alayhi Salatu Wasallam asks forgiveness for them, Rahima, they will find Allah Kareem most forgiving and most relenting, Allah. most merciful. But then the person asks me, he says, Shaykh, well, that was when the beloved of Allah was alive. Now he is dead. So how can you go to the Prophet والسلام, and ask him, that's why you're celebrating Milad. For this reason, Milad would be a bid'ah. We won't want to go into the whole description of Imam Abu Zakariya al-Nawi rahmatullahi as he has explained the kinds of bid'ah within the lights of Imam Muslim bin Hajjaj al-Kushari rahmatullahi ta'ala of Sahih al-Muslim. But he might ask me and say, well, this verse of the Quran was revealed for those who were alive in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that if they did guna, they would go to the Prophet and Allah's Rasul would make dua for them. This verse is not for those after the death or demise na'uzubillah in zalik of the Prophet alayhi wa sallam. Imam Qurtubi radiallahu ta'ala anhu lifts his bell and he says three days after the demise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says a man came from the village. He was crying and screaming. And he came and sat upon the grave of the Prophet Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu is the narrator of this hadith. We have the original text which has been preserved more than 1,435 plus 63 years. And Imam Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says a man came and he was crying. And the soil on the grave of the Prophet ﷺ was still wet. And he took hold of the soil and he put it on his head. He put it on his body. He put it in his beard. And he was disgraced with himself. And he says, oh Allah the Rasul ﷺ. Now I'm answering the question that people are saying, Allah the Rasul has passed away. So why would you go to the Prophet of Allah and ask for forgiveness? And Allah the Rasul asks for forgiveness. Imam Qurtubi radiallahu ta'ala and says, he cried and cried and said, Oh Prophet sallallahu he was using the word Ya Rasulullah. He was using, Imam Qurtubi says, three days after the demise, he was saying Ya Rasulullah, sitting next to the shrine and the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa It was mere soil, wet soil. Sayyidina Ali says, I was sitting there, I was reciting the glorious Quran. And he kept on crying and saying, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have done zulm upon myself and I have read in the glorious Quran that Allah says, When they have done zulm upon themselves, they will come to you, O Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, and you will ask forgiveness for them and they will seek repentance and penitence from Allah Kareem, seek tawbah from Allah. When Allah's Rasul asks forgiveness for them, they will find Allah the most merciful the most relenting, O Allah Rasul Ali Salatu Wasalam, make dua for me that Allah forgive my sins. He kept on crying and he kept on crying and saying that Ali Nabi Allah Ta'ala says that as he became unconscious, he says, I heard with these ears which Mustafa Kareem Ali Salatu Wasalam's cry, a voice came and it said, Oh such a one, go Allah has forgiven your sins. And just before I finish, let me just take you to the land of Cairo. When I went into Cairo, there was a masjid. And within the masjid, it was known that this is the masjid of Imam Ahmad al-Rifai radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Today the Shaykh comes, people stand up for the Shaykh. When the Shaykh pass away, people go to the graves and the shrines of the Shaykh and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But look at the Egyptians, the Arabs. We walk into the shrine of Sayyidina Imam Ahmad Rifai radiallahu ta'ala anhu 
and the Egyptians were kissing the doors. They were kissing the door frame. They were kissing the threshold of the door. And when I asked him, why are you kissing the doors of the walls of this room in which Sayyidina Imam Ahmad Rifai is buried? And he says that he is from the awliya of Allah. Allah. It is the same Imam Ahmad Rifai whose link of Ruhaniyah, whose link of spiritualism, whose link of Sufism was so strong to such an extent that great authentic narrators, chains of narration, Muhaddisun have mentioned that Imam Rifai and go to that masjid in Cairo today and every single normal Bedouin Egyptian who has come from the villages, he will reiterate and retell the same story to you. He was saying that this is the man whose link was so close to the Prophet He is from the Ashraf, from the family of the Prophet and one day he had the chance himself physically to go to the shrine of the Prophet in Medina al Manawara, stood there and started to say, Assalamu wa salamu alayka ya jaddi. And in return, there came Assalamu alaykum wa salam ya ibni. Mustafa Kareem answered from his own rest place, and peace be upon you, my son, as well. Allah. And he became in such a way where he was, as normal people would say, he's gone into a frenzy, he's gone into ecstasy. He's gone into such a feeling that he can't explain. And within that feeling, he utters these words. He says, Oh, my beloved Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, for many years, people would come from far and wide, and specifically from the land of Egypt, from the land of Masr. And when they would come, I would send my room with them. My human spirit would come. It would walk through the streets of Medina. It would just walk through the alleyways of Medina and say my salams upon you. And then it would return. Oh beloved of Allah, today Imam Ahmad Rifai has come himself physically. And how nice would it be? How most blessing and auspicious occasion would it be? How much of a greatest blessing of Allah would it be? That if you take your hand out of your blessed grave, out of your blessed shrine, and Ahmad Rifai can kiss your hand, the dunya saw at that time, hundreds of years after the passing away of the Prophet والسلام, Mustafa Kareem والسلام's blessed hand came out of his blessed grave which Imam Rifai took hold of and kissed it and the governor of Medina made the greatest of all members Imam Rifai sat upon that and people came in their hundreds and thousands and millions to kiss the hand of Imam Rifai because he had kissed the hand of Mustafa Kareem